Hello and welcome to a Cloud Developer Channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about running SQL on Docker using Windows. The specific items I am going to cover today are installing Docker and Windows container feature. We're going to pull the SQL Docker image from the Docker Hub. We're going to create the SQL container and then we're going to connect to that SQL instance in that container. And we're going to show you how to create a test database using the normal SQL management studio process. So let's go ahead and get started. So what I have uh, here is I actually have a Docker test machine that I've created before. And this Docker machine actually um, is a, just a Windows 2016 machine that doesn't really have any other features installed. So what I'm doing right now is I'm establishing a, a remote PowerShell session. And what I'm going to show you first is when I run get Windows feature command and specify containers, it's actually going to come back and tell me that the actual feature is not installed itself. And uh, the thing that we're going to actually need to be able to do is uh, when we install the, the Docker functionality, it's going to actually automatically install the Windows feature for containers as well. So what we need to do first is we need to actually install uh, what is called a module for Docker MSFT provider. And this is uh, what uh, Microsoft uh, created to be able to actually uh, support the, the Docker functionality on Windows. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and actually uh, call Docker, or sorry, not Docker, install module. And we're going to specify name, Docker MSFT provider. I'll specify force and verbose just to show us some additional login information. So what you will see is it's actually going to go ahead and ask me to install the new version of NuGet. And I am going to go ahead and say yes. And now here what you will see is uh, once it actually installs it, I should be able to install the Docker uh, package itself. So everything got installed and the next step is to install package. The package name is going to be Docker. And we're going to sp specify the provider we just actually uh, installed. So it's going to be Docker. MSFT provider force and verbose just to give us additional login information. I'm going to go ahead and press enter and uh, let's wait for this to go ahead and install the uh, Windows container feature. As you saw before, the Windows contain container feature wasn't actually installed. So this is uh, actually enabling that functionality right now. And then it's going to pull down the Docker uh, package itself and then make it available for us to start using. So this is what it's doing right now and it's done. So now what I want to show you is we're, we're not done yet. So uh, if I actually run Docker info, you'll notice that we're getting an error and that is because we actually need to restart the machine after the installation process. So I'm going to go ahead and run restart computer slash force. And while that's actually doing that, uh, we can see that uh, this machine is actually rebooting and it is going to um, apply the necessary updates. And then we're going to be able to uh, reestablish the PowerShell session. And then I'll show you uh, the process of being able to actually test to make sure everything is working correctly. So now that the machine uh, has been rebooted, I'm going to go ahead and do the enter PS session. Docker test, and that's the name of the machine. And it should be able to connect, and I should be able to start running my Docker commands. So here, if I do uh, Docker info, you'll see that now we're actually getting the information back from Docker. Um, one of the commands uh, that you should be able to run to see if there are Docker images is Docker PS. And it doesn't actually show you anything because we haven't actually installed any Docker images or then pulled down any Docker images. So uh, what we can do is we can actually test that everything is working by running another command here. And this command here is actually telling Docker to go ahead and uh, pull down the Hello World nano server uh, uh, container from a Docker Hub. And one of the things that uh, it does is actually it goes and downloads that new image. And it also downloads the nano server image as well. So this image itself is about, uh, I believe, 
seven to eight hundred megabytes in size and then what it's going to do is it has a very simple uh, application running inside of it that all it does is basically it gives you some output to show you that the Docker instance is actually set up correctly. So once it actually completes, we'll be able to see the, the information and we should be able to actually run multiple instances of this Docker container as well. And it's actually running the installation and once it completes, it will execute the Docker image. And there you go. So you can see that the newer image got downloaded and uh, this is the output. Now if I actually run Docker PS again here, you'll notice that uh, nothing is running and that's because there's actually nothing uh, forcing that Docker container to, to stop uh, or you know, continue running. So it exits out and if I actually run Docker PS dash A, you'll notice that the actual command um, execute it right here and it finished and exit out now the actual docker container itself has stopped so what I can do is I can go ahead and remo remove that docker container so if I do dash a again you'll notice it's no longer there but what you also see if you run a docker images um, that the hello world uh, image itself is already there and it's actually one gigabyte in size and if I run the command to go ahead and run that hello world nano server again, the nice thing here is that it actually already has the image in the cache and it doesn't need to go and download it again. So it, it basically I can run this command uh, as much as I want to. It will run it, it will shut it down, and I can run multiple instances of this. Now, uh, the the purpose of this video is to actually show you that you can do this uh, with a SQL server as well. And I actually have another uh, VM created here that I want to show you, and it's called Dev Containers. And this is where I, I did my uh, testing of the SQL container itself. I'm going to go ahead and establish a session to that. And um, I'll show you here that I don't have any containers actually running, um, and none of them are stopped either. But I do have Docker images uh, already loaded, and I have uh, a couple of images here. I have an IS image, I have a SQL image, um, this is SQL Express, and I also have what's, uh, there's an application called Portainer, and I'll show you that later. And the actual images uh, are 10 and a half gigabytes for IIS, 12 gigabytes uh, for SQL, and that's why I didn't want to have to show you actually how to, um, you know, me downloading that particular image because the process is pretty much the same as for the Hello World application where you just run a command to say go run it and if it notices that that image is not there, it'll actually download it. So the, the actual command is no different than what I'm going to be showing you here. So the only difference would be is how quickly it actually starts up and creates that Docker image. So what I'm going to do is uh, show you a quick command that I can run to actually uh, create a Docker image that has the SQL Express uh, built into it and we can actually connect to it. So here what you'll see is I'm running a Docker command. Um, it, it's docker run dash D and this actually tells it to run in the background dash P to specify the ports that we want to map. So in this case when I run my SQL Management Studio I'm going to be uh, connecting to the default port which is 1433. And it's going to be mapping to the internal port of the SQL Docker container on port 1433. Dash E says uh, this is an argument that's being passed in into the actual image for SA underscore password. And this is the password we're going to be using to connect to that SQL instance uh, using the SA username. And then a dash E accept EULA is a standard EULA agreement uh, acceptance. And then we're specifying the actual image that we want to be using here. So if I go ahead and actually uh, open up Management Studio real quick, you will notice that I actually will not be able to connect uh, to the instance here. So uh, the machine name itself is um, Dev Containers. And I don't have to actually specify port 1433 simply because that's the default port. But what I do want to do is I want to specify authentication and that's going to be SA username. And if I do password one and I'll go ahead and try to run it, it will actually not be able to connect because there's nothing listening on that port yet. So I'll go ahead and hit cancel here and go back to my PowerShell window. And I'll just go ahead and execute this command now. So 
and there you go. Literally, uh, in about three seconds, I actually got my uh, SQL, C uh, SQL Express instance running in a Docker container. And if I'll do uh, Docker PS, it shows me that it's actually running right now. And I'll go back here and I'll hit connect and it connected immediately. If I go back and uh, actually connect to the database and hit new, I should be able to create a test database. And uh, it's right here. So it, that's how simple it is to actually be able to create these. Now, let's say you wanted to actually create another instance of the SQL Express uh, SQL Server and you want to be able to run it on the same machine. So what you can simply do is change the port number here uh, to something uh, like, let's say, 50,000. And internally, it's going to map to the same port uh, in a container because that's what it was configured for. So I'll go ahead and run that. And it just created another Docker image, so uh, or container, I should say. If I run Docker PS, you'll see that now we have actually two uh, containers running. So what, I be, what I'm going to be able to do now is connect to a dev containers, comma, uh, 50,000. And I'll specify password one again. And as you can see, I have that uh, new SQL Server Express instance. Now, if I go ahead and disconnect from these instances, and go, let's go ahead and actually kill these uh, Docker uh, containers. And I'll specify the ID, docker stop six. So when I run docker, um, these instances are no longer there. And I can go ahead and actually remove them. And you can see that I have nothing again. And I am going to go ahead and run that command uh, that creates me the default instance uh, of the SQL Express. And it's listed right here and I'll go back and connect. So this is something uh, important to know about is by default when you uh, create and destroy these Docker images, they do not persist their storage. Um, and this is gonna be a topic for another day. We'll show you how to actually uh, connect to the SQL Server um, database and be able to actually persist the information and persist the database itself so you can reuse it. Now, uh, this type of Docker containers are actually very useful for testing purposes. So you have processes that are running that constantly try to verify um, your, your, your SQL scripts and you need to constantly be able to rebuild your databases or change configurations. You're testing uh, different settings. Uh, this is actually a good way for you to be able to make those adjustments quickly, actually test them, and then be able to throw away these instances of the SQL Server database. So uh, this uh, was all I wanted to share with you through the video and how simple it is to actually be able to create uh, SQL running on Docker in Windows. Um, and I hope you enjoy and you can use this uh, for the things that uh, you're doing in your job or as your hobby. So if you have any questions, uh, go ahead and and uh, put the comments in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, uh, please go ahead and like and subscribe to the channel as I'll be releasing more videos around Docker containers uh, on Linux, on Windows, uh, and with many different applications. And um, I, I'm hoping that this will be useful for, for you in the future. So um, hopefully you enjoyed this and uh, have a great day.